Hey everyone, we are continuing on with word for word Bible comic, the book of Judges. So we continue on. Let's take a look here at the front cover. We have, well, when I think of the book of Judges originally, the, the story that's prominent to me is Samson. So it'll be interesting to see how much they jump into or they focus on that character in that story. I'm going to guess that's Samson at the front there. Once again, the uh, cover does not disappoint, just beautifully looking. Let's take a quick look at the back here. Yeah, we have the ancient fortresses lie in ruins and temples and dark entities have been torn down. In a battle after battle, God has smashed the enemies of his holy nation and they have at last taken the promised land. But now his chosen people have turned their back on him, forgetting the great waters that parted before them and the massive city walls that shatter all their call. They leave God's way in the dirt and try to live life by their own rules. These dark centuries are a spiral of temptation, greed, lust, betrayal, and tragedy. However, ordinary men like Samson and Gideon are called by an angel of heaven and given divine powers to turn the tide and save the people from annihilation. Although it seems that even these heroes are not free from corruption. And that's, that's really well put synopsis. The book of Judges to me was this uh, dark period of time where it just almost seemed hopeless uh, for God's people. Oh, whoa, okay. It doesn't take long to see a beheading right here. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. So we have the introduction here uh, that kind of gives a bit of the backstory where Moses frees his people from Egypt and later Joshua leads them to conquer uh, the whole of Canaan. Yeah, here we go. The book of Judges deals with ancient issues which retain their relevance. War, slavery, murder, and abuse are as real today in our world as in the late Bronze Age, and that's so true. We think that it's so crazy what was going on back then, and yet you look today and what's going on in our, in our world, it's it's very similar to some degree, very similar as crazy as they were. So it's not so crazy back then when you really take the time to think about it. So here we go. We have a gorgeous looking map here and we just start off here with the Israelites ask the Lord who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites and the Lord answered Judah shall go up I have when Judah attacked the Lord gave the Canaanites and Perizzites into their hands and they struck down 10,000 men at Bizek okay and as you would expect from the book of Judges it, it, there is no short supply of violence it gets right to it, uh, I mean, as you can see here. Okay, this is pretty cool. We got some full page graphics here. I don't think, I don't know if I've seen this before where it's basically one panel and it takes up the entire two pages as a spread. That's pretty cool. Of course, then there's some idolatry going on here. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and, be and because they did this evil, the Lord gave Elgon, king of Moab, power over Israel. Look at this. This is almost the posture of what we see from Jabba the Hutt in uh, Return of the Jedi, I believe, episode 6. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. But yeah, there's very little dialogue going on here with these panels. It's just more for atmosphere, and I always like that too. That's pretty cool. They don't get too gory with the violence. Like, as you can see, uh, the sword has been drawn from his right thigh and plunged into the king's belly. And you don't really see, you only see a portion of it. So I think this is really clever on how they uh, find a middle ground of not being too gory, but still showing that the violence is real. What I love about purchasing all of these volumes is that I have the right to say what I want without any type of bias or any type of uh, pressure to give any type of good review. I'm just going to say what I say. And that's why I always buy all of these books just to, then I feel like I have the right to share my honest thoughts. Still no sign of Samson yet. I, I know I, we're not there yet, but I think we're getting close now. 
Okay, looks like we're here in Gideon at the moment. Yeah, this is definitely Gideon here. We're Gideon and God are having a conversation. God is clearly displaying his power uh, that he can use a man like Gideon and a, and a small army of 300 to defeat any other powerful opposition. And I, yeah, this is where Gideon had thousands and thousands of armed men, but God tells Gideon, send them back, you know, and sends thousands and thousands away to the point where Gideon's left with an army of 300. And as we know, Gideon wins that battle easily with 300, which just to many people seems like an absolute miracle, but really it's just God's power being on full display of what he can do. And if he, God wants to take over an army, he'll do it with 300, 30, or even three people if he wants to. So here we go. Nice, another full page spread of all these different panels of the fighting going on. I'm just flipping through these uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what to expect from a volume like this. I tell you, this word-for-word -word Bible comic series, I think they do the most unique way of displaying their panels. Like, look at this. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven panels, and just done in the most unique shapes. Like, look at this little thin panel here. <laughs> like, almost, almost unnecessary, and yet they found a way to make use of it. Like, they take full advantage of these pages. What a very unique way to display the panels. Pretty cool. And we're about at the halfway mark here of this volume. Okay, we're just in Judges chapter uh, 9 here. I will say the, the, the panels are very dark. Like, look at this. I know it, they're trying to show nighttime, but... It is very dark looking, like you definitely got to read this in a well-lit place to really see what's going on. Yeah, there is just, a, as you can see, as I'm flipping through these pages, there is just a ton of violence going on. And that's what, like I said, it was a very dark and hopeless time period, yet God continued to show his power. He took a very hopeless situation and made it very hopeful and continued to uh, protect his people. Oh, wow. A woman dropped an upper millstone on his head and it just totally beheaded this guy right here. Wow. Of course, more tearing down of idol worship here. And then we have a moment here where it's just like this black and white scene here. It's pretty cool. It kind of just to show the reader uh, of a past event that happened. I think now we're finally getting into the story of Samson here. Oh, this is pretty cool. Pretty cool visual here. And the Lord did an amazing thing while Manoah and his wife watched as the flame blazed up from the altar toward heaven. Oh yeah, here's where an, uh, a lion comes roaring towards and uh, crack just completely annihilates this lion. Uh, he tore the line apart with his bare hands as he, he might have torn a young goat. Like, unbelievable. Like, <laughs> I've always loved that part of the Bible where it just completely decimates a lion. Like, who does that? Who decimates a lion and just tears it apart? Uh, absolutely incredible. And then, yeah, we have this unique font here, which is pretty cool. I, I don't know what the purpose of it. I don't know why it goes from, like, this font style to this. Uh, never really fully understood it. But yeah, we are well in the story of Samson here. Here we have just several pages of the panels just breathing, where there's no dialogue whatsoever, just the action speaking for itself. Here we have Samson 
goodness, look at he's just annihilating everyone here. It's really cool. Really well done. <laughs> this one almost looks like he's just some sort of a samurai with the uh, with these uh jaw bones here. It's <laughs> just incredible. Yeah, a donkey's jawbone, and he has killed a thousand men. Uh, like, just unbelievable. You know, Samson is a really awesome character that I don't think gets enough love. I mean, there's a great story lesson to Samson. It is really cool to see how God worked his power and miracles through, through Samson. And even when he wasn't granted these super powers that God gave him, he still showed boldness and strength in his faith. Like all of us, we fall short, we sin, we make mistakes, but Samson still had a heart for God and want to do the right thing. So yeah, there you have it. There's like, there's lots to discover here. And just go right to the end here and just see if they done anything different. No, they've done the usual. Again, this is something where I think readers will really enjoy, and I would encourage anyone that buys these volumes to really take the moment to explore what they have at the end here. They have a lot of awesome explanations of what all the characters are, and for example, the high priest, and how old was Othniel. I have no clue who Othniel is. No idea, so... I think there's a lot to gain from the back of this book, too. The Canaanites, and the dissected panel and there's not many of these pages i'd say there's like eight to ten pages but it's definitely worth checking out why did the lion attack samson like that would that would be a perfect thing to read about because it's just an awesome scene and then yeah just their their design choices how they designed delilah and then the temple of dagon or dagon what is the rating of this one okay 15 plus so that was the rating uh, that sounds really fair, considering how much blood and violence there was in this, so... Here you have it. The Book of Judges. I thought this was a really impressive volume. Uh, the pages are a little bit darker than what I expected, but um, overall, I think it's a worthwhile read, and uh, it does not disappoint in the story of Samson.